now that we have already seen in variational method first the differential equation differential equation is converted to equivalent equivalent integral form and then this form is converted to set of linear algebraic equation now that we have already seen that in variational method first the differential equation is converted to equivalent integral form and then this equivalent integral form is converted to linear algebraic equation let us see a technique called as euler lagrange equation let us see a technique called as euler lagrange equation which will help us to convert this governing differential equation in terms of its equivalent integral form so this euler lagrange equation will help us only till this step to convert this differential equation into equivalent integral form now we had already seen this right this was our if this is a exact solution and if this is the trial solution then this is what is called as variation this is what is called as variation and our aim will be to minimize this variation that is if this is the suppose say functional a which is a function of u u dash and u double dash and further this u are function of x then our aim will be to minimize this to minimize this functional that is we will try to make this variation in a as equal to 0 we will try to minimize this functional so we'll proceed from here so now we have this functional a as integral from x1 to x2 which is function of x u and its derivatives u dash and u double dash we will call this as functional we'll call this as functional and this u and its derivatives u dash and u double dash are the functions of x and that is why we have already seen what do you mean by functional it is a function of some other function now here this a is functional because it is a function of u and further u u dash and u double dash are functions of x are further the functions of x further we have seen that the condition the condition the condition for functional for functional a to be minimum minimum is the variation is the variation in functional is the variation in functional must be equal to must be equal to must be equal to zero that is variation in a will be equal to zero right and then we have already seen and we have already seen that this variation in a can be written in terms of its total derivative right if you remember last time we had considered u as a trial function it was a0 plus a1 x plus a2 x square and we had uh, said that the variation of u can be written in terms of its total derivative as as partial derivative of u partial derivative of u with respect to a0 into change in a0 plus partial derivative of u with respect to a1 times change in a1 plus partial derivative of u with respect to a2 times change in a2 this was the equivalent i mean this uh, expression gives the variation in u in terms of its total derivative similarly here the functional a can be written in terms of its total derivative as total derivative as variation of a is integral x from x1 to x2 
partial derivative of this function with respect to u multiplied by change in u multiplied by change in u plus partial derivative of this function with respect to u dash multiplied by change in u dash plus partial derivative of this function with respect to u double dash multiplied by change in u double dash dx should be equal to 0 from this condition this variation should be equal to 0 right this we can also this we can this we can also this function this variation variation in terms of total derivatives we can also write it as we can also write it as integral from x1 to x2 change in this function times dx equal to 0 this is the similar form that is this variation in terms of its total derivative now what we will do is we will take we will integrate this one by one we will take this term first we will take this term first first we will take this term and then first we will take this term and then we will take this second term and then we will take this third term we will integrate it uh, in parts and then we will add them up so our first so our first integral is first integral is integral from x1 to x2 partial derivative of f with respect to u times change in u into dx this is our first integral and we'll keep this as it is we don't have much scope to uh, proceed further with this integral we'll, we'll keep it as it is then our second integral then our second integral is this term right this term so that is integral from x1 to x2 partial derivative of f with respect to u dash times change in u dash dx so this term we can integrate it further i can call this term as u n v n you must be aware that integration of u into v integration of u into v is u integral of v minus integral of derivative of u times integral of v and then dx so this is this is the integration by part formula if i use it here if i use it here what will i get is if i use it here what will i get is partial derivative of f with respect to u dash into integral of v so integral of del uh, change in u dash will become change in u from x1 to x2 minus minus integral from x1 to x2 derivative of u so derivative of u here will be derivative of partial derivative of f with respect to u dash and then change in u integral of v will be again it will be change in u times dx so our second term turns out to be this and then similarly if i proceed with the third term similarly if i proceed with third term that is integral of x from x1 to x2 integral of integral from x1 to x2 partial derivative of f with respect to u double dash into variation in u double dash dx if i follow this same if i if i follow this same steps what i will get is what i will get is integral of del f by del u double dash change in u dash dx from x1 to x2 will be equal to will be equal to partial derivative of f with respect to u double dash times change in u dash from x1 to x2 minus derivative of partial derivative of f with respect to u double dash <coughs> u double dash minus derivative of partial derivative of f with respect to u double dash times change in u times change in u from x1 to x2 from x1 to x2 plus integral from x1 to x2 second derivative of partial derivative of f with respect to u double dash times again change in u dx fine so this is what we will get 
this the first term will keep it as it is the second term comes out to be this and the third term comes out to be this so now here what we can do is the, all the terms which are uh, inside this integral sign from x1 to x2 that is this term right so all these terms which are inside this integral so this term then this term and this term i will write them together i'll write them together so this terms if i if i put them together then it will be x1 to x2 x1 to x2 the first term is partial derivative of f with respect to u right and i will keep this term later uh, to write it down later on because this change in u times dx change in u times dx and change in u times dx is common in all the three terms so i'll write them at the last so from this term what i get is minus minus derivative of derivative of change in f uh, i mean partial derivative of f with respect to u dash right and then from this term i get plus d square by dx square partial derivative of f with respect to u double dash times times this change in u change in u dx so we have finished with all the terms which were inside the integral sign this term this term and then this term so what is remaining with us is now these terms this one term this second term and then this third term so let us let us arrange them together so it will be plus 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 to this integral itself i mean to this term itself we will add the second term that is that is partial derivative of f with respect to u dash partial derivative of f with respect to u dash times times change in u so this change in u again i will write it last and then similar kind of one more term we have it here right this is also some term here multiplied by change in u from limit x1 to x2 similar to this kind similar to this term so that i will write it here now so that will be minus d by dx minus d by dx times derivative of f with respect to u double dash right and then this whole thing multiplied by change in u change in u and the limits are from x1 to x2 so i have managed to combine these two terms together and then finally what we have is the last term that is this term which is partial derivative of f with respect to u double dash times change in u dash from x1 to x2 and this whole this this whole term right from this right from this to this should be equal to zero and why this is this should be equal to zero because this is these terms are nothing but what we have substituted here right and then finally this variation should be equal to zero now what is what is what is change what is this delta u what is this change in u this is some arbitrary value this is arbitrary right this is arbitrary this is arbitrary and therefore and therefore and therefore this this term is arbitrary and therefore to satisfy this condition that is this sum this terms equal to 0 can happen only if this each term this each term are equal to 0 since this change in u is arbitrary it cannot be equal to 0 therefore this each term has to be 0 only then i can get this entire term here as equal to 0 so from this what we say is since this is arbitrary since change in u is arbitrary each term each term must vanish must vanish individually right this each term 
this is the first term should be equal to zero this second term equal should be equal to zero and this third term will be also should be equal to zero so from this we get that this first term change i mean partial derivative of f with respect to u minus derivative of partial derivative of f with respect to u dash plus derivative second derivative of partial derivative of f with respect to u double dash should be equal to zero this is what we get from the first term and this equation is nothing but this important equation is nothing but euler lagrange equation this is euler lagrange right euler lagrange equation a very important equation this equation will help us to convert the governing differential equation into the its equivalent integral form and the other condition which we get from this are this term is also equal to zero and this term is also equal to zero so with that with that what we get is with that what we get is partial derivative of f with respect to u dash minus d by dx of partial derivative of f with respect to u double dash from x1 to x2 is zero and 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 partial derivative of f with respect to u double dash from x1 to x2 is equal to zero these are nothing but these are boundary conditions these are boundary conditions and these are also very important boundary i mean very important conditions which we will be using while solving the problems we can group them as natural boundary condition natural boundary conditions we have already seen how to identify the given boundary condition is natural or identical boundary or essential boundary condition so this turns out to be the natural boundary condition you can try that rule which we had seen in our previous classes and then you can take a call whether these are natural or essential boundary conditions right so from this from this now whole session from this whole lecture what we understand is we had already seen that the differential equation uh in in case of variational method is first converted to equivalent integral form and then this equivalent integral form is converted to the linear algebraic equation so this euler lagrange equation which we have seen just now which we have derived just now this euler lagrange equation will help us to convert this governing differential equation in in terms of equivalent integral form and how exactly it does that we will take an we will take one example in our next lecture